the classic American steam locomotive is in many ways symbolic of the Old West. Relics from an earlier time in the history of the railroads, these locomotives were long ago retired and sent off into the sunset. A number of these iconic iron horses were saved from scrap by Hollywood film studios in the 1930s and 40s, living out their second lives as stars of the silver screen, eventually making their way into preservation. Others survived purely by luck. Of all the quaint, wood-burning steam locomotives that still exist, only a handful continue to operate. Two such trusty steeds are the Eureka and the Glenbrook. Located in the mountains of southern Colorado and northern New Mexico, the Cumbres and Toltec Scenic Railroad traverses 64 miles of some of the most spectacular untouched scenery in the western United States. Originally, this rail line was built in the late 1800s as part of the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad's narrow gauge system, with rails spaced just 3 feet apart instead of the more common 4 feet 8.5 inches of standard gauge track. After the Rio Grande filed for abandonment, a portion of this route was saved by the states of Colorado and New Mexico as a tourist line in 1970. To celebrate 50 years of tourist operations, the Cumbres and Toltec Scenic Railroad decided to put on an event that they dubbed the Victorian Iron Horse Roundup. This special celebration was to commemorate the early years in the railroad's history by featuring several locomotives dating from before the turn of the last century. Denver and Rio Grande Steam Locomotive No. 168 was recently restored to service by the Cumbres and Toltec along with a set of vintage passenger cars from the same time period, and this historic train set would be one of the highlights of the event. Denver and Rio Grande Western No. 315 was also in attendance, relettered for the Denver and Rio Grande and numbered as Locomotive 425. Visiting from the Colorado Railroad Museum, Rio Grande Southern No. 20 was also on display in Antonito, Colorado over the course of the event. Without a doubt though, the stars of the show were two 1875-built wood-burning steam locomotives, the Eureka and the Glenbrook. From August 21st through August 29th, 2021, several trips were scheduled over portions of the railroad pulled by these historic locomotives. Come along as we visit the Cumbres and Toltec Scenic Railroad for the Victorian Iron Horse Roundup. The weekend of Saturday and Sunday, August 21st and 22nd, served as a soft open for the event. On each day, one short round trip was made from Antonito, Colorado to Bighorn, a distance of approximately 20 miles. Saturday's trip was pulled by Denver and Rio Grande locomotives 168 and 425, while the Sunday trip had the two woodburners, Eureka and Glenbrook, leading the charge. On the morning of August 21st, we see 168 and 425 leading their train at the top of Gravity Hill, running about 20 minutes behind the railroad's regularly scheduled excursion train. That afternoon, 168 returned to Antonito running solo. 425 followed a few minutes behind with the passenger train.
The next morning, Eureka and Glenbrook are seen approaching a cut near Ferguson Trestle with a passenger train bound for Bighorn. We see the return trip descending the grade on Gravity Hill as some afternoon clouds moved in. Monday the 23rd was the big display day in Antonito, Colorado. No trains were running anywhere on the railroad, but all the locomotives were steamed up and open to public viewing. All five engines simmered in front of the Antonito engine house as throngs of spectators marveled at these machines from a bygone era. Eureka is a 440 American type locomotive built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1875. It was purchased new by the Eureka and Palisade Railroad in Nevada and given the number 4. This was one of the many mining railroads in Nevada built to haul silver, people, and various materials between the mines and a connection point with the National Rail Network. In 1896, the locomotive was sold to the Sierra Nevada Wood and Lumber Company, where it continued to work until the late 1930s when it was sold for scrap and subsequently saved by Warner Brothers Studios for use in several movies up until the mid to late 1970s. It ended up at an Old West themed amusement park in Las Vegas, Nevada, where it was badly damaged by a fire in 1985. Fortunately, the locomotive was saved by Las Vegas attorney Dan Markoff. Over the next several years, Dan and a group of friends and family worked to restore the locomotive to operation. When completed in 1991, the Eureka looked largely as it did when it was delivered back in 1875. The only significant modification was the air compressor and air brake system. Eureka made its public debut as a restored locomotive in 1991 at the California State Railroad Museum's Rail Fair 91 in Old Town, Sacramento. Since that time, Eureka has made several special trips to various railroads and museums in the western United States. Behind the Eureka was the Glenbrook, a 260 mogul also built by Baldwin in 1875. Like the Eureka, it began its career in the state of Nevada starting off with the Carson and Tahoe Lumber and Fluming Company. After passing through the hands of a couple different owners, it was reacquired by the locomotive's second owners, the Bliss family of the Lake Tahoe Railway and Transportation Company, and donated to the state of Nevada. Eventually, it was transferred into the care of the Nevada State Railroad Museum. Over the course of many years, Glenbrook was painstakingly restored to operation by the museum, finally completed in May of 2015. Both engines shone proudly in the morning sunlight. One interesting historical point worth note is that during the days of the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad, no wood burners ever traversed this rail line, known more formally as the San Juan Extension. For almost the entirety of the event, the Glenbrook would remain coupled behind the Eureka by means of the Glenbrook's front drawbar. Sitting just a few tracks over was Denver and Rio Grande Western number 315. 
For this event, the locomotive was backdated to appear how it did during the early days of the railroad. At that time, the locomotive carried the number 425. Some other cosmetic changes that were made to the locomotive include an older headlamp, repainted smoke box, and different font and lettering on the tender and cab. 315 was built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1895 as a 280 consolidation type for the Florence and Cripple Creek Railroad carrying the number 3. It was later sold to the Denver and Rio Grande and given the number 425 and eventually 315 when the Denver and Rio Grande became the Denver and Rio Grande Western. The locomotive was retired in 1949 and placed on display in a park in Durango, Colorado. In 1956, the 315 was used in the filming of the movie Around the World in 80 Days. The Durango Railroad Historical Society formed in 1999 to restore the locomotive to operation, a task they completed in 2007. Since then, 315 has operated on both the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad and the Cumbres and Toltec Scenic Railroad. Tucked in behind the 315 was Denver and Rio Grande 168, a T12 class 460 10-wheeler. 168 was just recently restored by the Cumbres and Toltec after spending many years in a park in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The locomotive was built new by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1883 for the Denver and Rio Grande. Sporting larger drive wheels than most other narrow gauge locomotives, it was used primarily in passenger service. 168 even had the honor of hauling then-president William Howard Taft around the narrow gauge system at one point. In 1938, the locomotive was retired and donated to the city of Colorado Springs. On another track, Rio Grande Southern No. 20 was preparing to make a short test run in preparation for a series of special photography trips scheduled following the conclusion of the Victorian Iron Horse Roundup. The 20 was constructed in 1899 by the Schenectady Locomotive Works for the Florence and Cripple Creek. In 1915, it was sold to the Rio Grande Southern, operating between Durango and Ridgeway, Colorado. During its time on the Rio Grande Southern, the locomotive was featured in two Hollywood films, the 1950 picture A Ticket to Tomahawk and Viva Zapata in 1952. When the Rio Grande Southern ceased operations in 1952, the 20 was saved by the Rocky Mountain Railroad Club and placed on display in Alamosa, Colorado. It was moved again in 1959 to Golden, Colorado and the Colorado Railroad Museum. From 2006 to 2020, the museum completed a full operational restoration on the locomotive. The Victorian Iron Horse Roundup was the first outing number 20 made to an outside railroad following the restoration. Also in front of the engine house was K36 Class 282 Mikado Locomotive 489, one of four used on the regular trains. 489 was recently converted from burning coal to oil. Over on the loop track around the Antonito Yard, the recently restored Denver and Rio Grande passenger train set was sitting for display and tours. All four of these cars were built in the late 1800s for the Denver and Rio Grande. Car 256 is the oldest, built in 1876. These cars were just restored by the railroad to create a historic train set to be used with Locomotive 168 on special trips between Antonito and Osier a few times each year. The cars have been beautifully restored to their turn-of-the-century appearance. In the afternoon, a demonstration was held using Denver and Rio Grande Western Steam Pile Driver OB. This unique piece of equipment was once used to install utility poles along the railroad right-of-way. Since the OB does not have its own onboard steam boiler, steam was piped in from Locomotive 425 to power the pile driving apparatus. First, the car was stabilized and anchored into place to keep the car from moving during the pile driving operations. Next, the pile driving boom was raised. With the mechanism raised, the pile driver was rotated into position and a utility pole dragged into place.
Steam was then once again used to lift the hammer and drive the pole into the ground. The day's festivities came to a conclusion with a night photo shoot that was held in front of the Antonito engine house. Tuesday morning began with an 8.30 a.m. scheduled departure of 168, 425 and the vintage train out of Antonito. The destination for this trip was Osier, Colorado, midpoint on the railroad and home to the Osier Lunch Hall. On the other end of the railroad, K36 class locomotive 487 was pulling the regular train up the hill out of Chama. Two boxcars were hitching a ride on the end of the train. These cars would be dropped at Cumbre Summit for use on one of the special excursions later in the week. Back at Ferguson Trestle in the afternoon, Locomotive 168 brought the historic consist east as it returned to Antonito. A special photographer's mixed freight was operated using the Eureka and the Glenbrook on Wednesday, August 25th. This trip ran from Antonito to Bighorn and return. After having to change out a bearing on the tender of the Glenbrook at the last minute, the train left Antonito just a half an hour behind schedule.
At Bighorn, the locomotives were serviced and train turned while waiting for the railroad's regularly scheduled excursion to Antonito. With the regular train out of the way, the special backed a short distance to the west for a photo run by at Bighorn Mountain before proceeding back east. The final run-by for the day was at the fill about a mile east of the bottom of Whiplash Curve. Another successful day was in the books as the train made its evening return to Antonito. On Thursday, Eureka and Glenbrook pulled the passenger train on a round trip from Antonito to Osier. The train is seen rolling across the high desert out of Antonito and then cresting the summit of Gravity Hill.
Being small engines, the Eureka and the Glenbrook had limited fuel and water capacity as built. This resulted in the train making several stops along the way to pick up more water and wood. The afternoon brought a summer thunderstorm to the region. These are common during the late August monsoon season in the southwest. In the evening, under threatening skies, the historic train neared the end of the day's journey as a light rain began to fall. Friday was set to be the only trip over the entire railroad, 168 and 425 pulling the passenger train, and the Eureka and the Glenbrook pulling a short freight train were scheduled to leave Antonito at 7.15 in the morning for a full day excursion to Chama. The passenger train left a few minutes ahead of the freight, and both could be seen for several minutes racing each other across the desert.
As the afternoon went on, the trains reached the west side of the railroad, having encountered a few delays along the way. The two trains did photo runbys in the Los Pinos Valley for the passengers and then proceeded around the Big Horseshoe Curve to the Los Pinos Water Tower.
after additional delays at the summit of Cumbres Pass, Locomotive 425 was sent on ahead with the passenger train arriving into Chama, New Mexico in the 9 o'clock hour. Eureka and the Glenbrook would be further delayed, finally pulling into Chama sometime after 11. Two trips were planned for Saturday, August 28th. The first was a round trip from Chama to the summit of Cumbres Pass to be pulled by the Eureka and the Glenbrook. In the evening, a round trip dinner train was planned from Chama to Osier behind the 168 and the 425. After some delays, the Cumbres turn left Chama around 11.30 a.m. At Lobato Meadows, the train stopped to take on more wood. The two locomotives worked hard to battle the steep grade as the train approached the second crossing of Highway 17.
A water and wood stop was made at Cresco. Unfortunately, the Eureka developed a mechanical problem and was unable to continue pulling the train. The Glenbrook attempted to take the train single-handedly the rest of the way to Cumbres, but the steep grades were just too much for the locomotive to tackle unassisted. Eventually, 425 was called out of Chama to rescue this special. A decision was made to tow the consist back down the hill to Chama. That afternoon, 425 rolled slowly backward as it pulled the special home. The dinner train ran as planned that evening, albeit well behind schedule. With one last full day of narrow gauge and over a week at the Cumbres and Toltec Scenic Railroad in the books, I decided to bring my trip to a close. The last day of the event, Sunday, August 29th, would see one final special excursion over the railroad as locomotives 168 and 425 would take the historic passenger consist on a never-done-before overnight run across the entire railroad from Chama to Antonito. The special left Chama a little after 10 p.m., arriving into Antonito on Monday the 30th, just a few hours after sunrise. Thanks for joining me for the Victorian Iron Horse Roundup. The event was a big success and a milestone in contemporary railroad preservation. A big thank you to the Cumbres and Toltec for hosting this monumental event, as well as the friends of the Cumbres and Toltec, Dan Markoff and his crew, the Nevada State Railroad Museum, and the Colorado Railroad Museum. I'll be back next Friday with a brand new railroading adventure right here on the YouTube channel. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.